Hey guys, what's up here? It's been a while since I made a guide and with all the meme videos I recently did, people might forget that I'm actually playing this game competitively, having won huge tournaments like the European Championship or coming in second in the World Cup. But I'm back to bring you yet another guide, this time about making the perfect gear build. Over the years I gathered a lot of knowledge about gear and abilities which I want to share in this compact video where I go over every basic thing there is to know about gear for beginners, but also going in depth on what exactly you want to play on what weapons for advanced players. I first gonna talk about abilities in general, then I gonna break down every single ability in what they do and on what weapons they are effective on, until I get to some gear example of top level players in the end. I put some timestamps in the description and onto the video for you guys to navigate to the part you're most interested in. Check out my other guides as well, which are linked in the description below, they already cover a huge chunk on what there is to know about this game. Also for those who didn't know, I'm streaming every couple of days, live over at Twitch if you want to catch me live, so with that being said, let's get started. First some general stuff about gear in this game. There are 25 unique abilities to choose from, each giving you a different benefit to boost your performance in the match. Combining and stacking different abilities allow you to enhance certain playstyles to make you way more effectively in what you want to achieve by playing a certain weapon. For example, having a build to confirm more kills as a slayer or to support your team better with specials and bombs when playing support. Not only can certain gear builds and abilities benefit certain playstyles, but certain maps and game modes as well. For example, running Object Shredder on Rainmaker can give you a significant advantage in popping your Rainmaker shield for more deadly pushes. Or you can get a major advantage using run speed on maps with lots of unswimmable surface. You can be creative while creating new sets or weapons to try out a lot of different playstyles to see what fits you best, but in general you want to think about what you want to do with a weapon and ask yourself how a certain ability helps me with what I want to achieve. When you understand what abilities run well with what playstyles, you can further enhance your own unique playstyles, but also predict how your opponents might play based on their gear, like a quick respawn heavy slayer which will take way more aggressive approaches the whole game long. Some abilities give you significant advantages in a lot of minor situations, so understanding what everything does and where it helps stacks up over time and will better prepare you for lots of different situations than a player who didn't invest much time into his gear. There are primary abilities like for example Ninja Squid, which can only be placed on a main ability slot, while secondary abilities like Swim Speed can be placed on every slot. Secondary abilities on main slots are roughly worth 3 sub-abilities. Sub-abilities are the three smaller slots beside the main ability slot on each gear. Some abilities already give great benefits when only using one sub-slot, while others have a better effect when stacking lots of them. In general, the effect of each additional added sub-ability declined with each ability of the same kind added, so having lots of different abilities rather than stacking one or two is more effectively. I will go further in detail on what abilities are good to stack and which are better to run only one or two sub-abilities with, when I talk about each ability separately. One last side note, of course it doesn't matter how your gear looks like since only the equipped abilities count, but some players prefer to run good looking gear since it can be a psychological advantage to run a set that you feel good about. Some players like me included don't mind how the gear we use looks like, but you can also just run ugly or odd looking gear for example to mess with your opponents. Getting spattered by something like this for example can be insulting already and have a psychological impact on a player. Understanding gear and knowing what you want is one thing, actually acquiring your desired gear in game can be challenging since you can't just edit the gear how you like it to be, but the game gives you different tools to get exactly what you want, even if it takes a while to grind to get it. The gear you buy in the shops come with one set main ability, while the other three side abilities needs to be leveled up and will be generated randomly. If you want different main abilities on a certain gear, there's two ways to get it. Either winning it in Salmon Run, where it gets a randomly selected main gear, or lurking the Splatnet 2 shop, where you can order gear with different main slots than the default one. If you're not happy with the side abilities you got on a certain gear, you can talk to merch and scrub them all off using money to be able to level them up again and get new abilities on it. Or you use a Sea Snail, which you can acquire in Splatfest or by leveling up your in-game rank, to reroll all side abilities on a gear. By scrubbing and rerolling, you will receive ability chunks of the abilities you just got rid of, which you can then use to swap out certain abilities, to really get exactly what you want on a gear. While leveling up gear, you can enhance your luck to get what you want by using drinks, which favor certain abilities to appear, which you can win in Salmon Run, or you pay attention to the gear's brand, which also favor what abilities you're more or less likely to get on a gear. 
For example, the brand Crack on favors swim speed and unfavors bomb defense up. While the average likeliness of a neutral ability to appear in the gear is roughly 6%, the favored ability in our example has a 30% chance to appear, while the unfavored one has only about 3%. Another way to obtain desired gear is to order it in the plaza from other squids, which you can do once a day, while merch delivers that gear on the next day with either none, one, two or even all three subslots of that exact ordered gear. So with a bit of luck you can already get a pretty good one just by ordering. While none of the methods mentioned can get you the gear you want immediately, combining all methods greatly help you to get the gear you want quickly, it just requires a bit of grinding. There are tons of resources and tools to help you deciding what exact abilities to run, which I have all linked in the description below. First there's the Spittoon Wiki, which has a great overview over each ability and what it does in detail, some nice graphics, which help you to know how the effects differ the more you stack from the same ability, and also a neat overview over brands to know what abilities get favored by them. Next we have loudout.inc, which allows you to edit your dream gear before you build it in game, plus it lets you mess around trying different builds to see what effects it has on you. It provides you with all relevant stats and even shows interactions with other sub weapons and specials. I will use this tool more in depth in the second part of the video, when talking about each ability separately, for you to get more familiar with it. Lastly there's sendu.inc, which is a great hub for competitive play in general. Since a lot of players have already put in lots of thought into builds for each weapon, it might be best to get some inspiration from players who have proven to play effectively with the weapons they play with by for example winning big tournaments or reaching top 500 in solo queue with said weapon. Sendu.inc allows you to search for builds for each weapon in the game by listing the builds from players who reach top 500 with it on top of the list. Here you can get a good overview on what abilities and playstyle often get played with the weapon of your choice. Here for example, we take a look at the player's builds who reach top 500 with the Kenza Splatter shot. All of them use stealth jump, half of them use comeback, lots of them use swim speed or main power up, while some of them go for quick respawn heavy builds. You can already get a good idea of what has been proven to be most effective on a weapon just by browsing Sendo Inc alone, so keep that in mind. Before I get to every ability separately, I want to point out a few abilities who are perfect to use for leftover slots, since these abilities grant you major benefits just by applying one of them, namely quick super jump, bomb defense up, ink resistance up, special saver and sometimes ink recovery up. As you can see by looking at the Kansas Splattershot builds by these top players, almost everyone used at least 3 of those 5 abilities somehow in their builds. So when you start creating your own builds, it's a good way to start using them since the unique different benefits you get from them are almost always worth it, considering them only taking up one subslot. If you want to find out why they're so useful, even when only using them in one slot, wait for the part or skip to it where I talk about the abilities separately. Also make sure to have a decent understanding on how roles work in this game, like Slayer, Support or Anchor, since I'm gonna use these terms a lot while talking about on what weapons certain abilities are strong on. If you haven't watched my guide on weapon roles yet, I highly recommend checking it out. With that being said, I'm now getting into each ability on their own, starting with all the secondary abilities which can be used on every slot, until I get to the main abilities which can be applied to only the main slots. First up swim speed. Swim speed up increases movement speed while swimming in squid form. Swim speed is one of the most universal abilities in the game and is effective on almost every weapon. Just being faster in your own aim makes your movement so much smoother. You get places quicker and most importantly you are way harder to hit since you simply move quicker. While every weapon benefits from this ability somehow, especially slayer weapons and short range weapons benefit most from it. As a slayer you want to go places fast to claim space and get kills. Weapons with shorter range like the sploosh, roller or tricester need to get close to opponents to be effective. And being fast definitely helps a lot. Also, heavy and slow weapons like the Explosion Dynamo benefit greatly from swim speed, since they are by default super slow and easy to catch. Out of all weight classes, they get the biggest movement boost from just a few subslots of swim speed, as you can see on this graph. Just having two subs of swim speed makes them as fast as a medium weapon. As you can see, the more swim speed you stack, the flatter the curves gets, meaning with each additional swim speed slot you get less and less effect, but swim speed is still one of the best abilities to stack. Run speed up increases movement speed while walking, except for when rolling with a roller or touching enemies in. Also it does not affect how far a player can jump. While still being a strong ability, it's way more weapon and map dependent than swim speed. For example, you want to use it on maps with lots of crates and unswimmable surface. 
like Monte Maria or New Alba Cortel. On Splatlings and the NSAP you're gonna see the most run speed use, since they have by default the highest run speed than any other weapon class in the game. Here you see people stacking tons of run speed since it just helps splatling so much while firing and retreating band cover. Slayer players sometimes use a few subs of run speed as well to be quicker while firing to be harder to hit. Two other weapons who use run speed a lot are Sloshing Machine and Tenderbella. Sloshing Machine benefits greatly by run speed in between sloshes and Tenderbella usually needs to be able to keep up with the shield when launched to stay behind cover while shooting simultaneously. Ink Saver Main reduces the ink consumption of main weapons, effectively allowing most weapons to fire longer. While also being a universal ability, which can help every weapon in a game, especially when you struggle with running out of ink, it's usually best effective on weapons which can't shoot a lot by default, like Dynamo Rollo, Tenterbella, Eliter, or Explosher. It's most effective on weapons who don't shoot continuously, like Chargers, Rollos, Sloshers, or Blasters. By using Main Saver, you increase the total amount you can shoot Slush or Flake with these weapons, which is important when you are close to running out of ink, since the shots you take have a high impact. While stacking decreases the effect significantly, it's best to pair it with ink recovery up to prevent losing too much effect with each ability. You want to mainly use main save on weapons who are able to control a lot of space with its main weapons, like Dynamo, Roller or Explosher. Also Tenterbella's shield counts as your main weapon, so it greatly helps Tenterbella to use the shield more often. Ink Saver Sub decreases the ink usage of sub weapons. It's kind of the opposite of Ink Saver Main and is used if you want to output a lot of bombs. Since stacking Sub Saver also decreases its effect with each added slot over time, it synergizes well with Ink Recovery Up in that regard, since every time you use a sub weapon, you need to sit in your ink, waiting for your ink to recharge to throw another bomb. You mainly want to use Sub Saver when you have a good bomb to spam in your kit like Burst Bomb, Spat Bomb, Suction Bomb, Curling Bomb, Auto Bomb or Point Senders. Support weapons benefit most from this ability, since most of them have the listed bombs and are looking to stay out of the heat of the battle, while also supporting from afar, so weapons like the Spattershot Junior or the NZIP benefit greatly from it. If you stack enough Sub Saver, it's possible to create gear sets allowing you to throw, for example, two Spat Bombs or three Burst Bombs at once, which, if used correctly, can be a deadly playstyle. Ink Recovery Up increases the refill rate of the user's ink tank. In general, use this ability when you want to output a lot of ink through your main or your sub weapon. You want to combine it with Ink Saver Main or Ink Saver Sub, like stated before, and use it on the same weapons as these two abilities. But never stack too much of it, since its effect gets significantly worse the more you stack it. It's one of the abilities which is always worth to just use one sub slot, since it will help you greatly to recover enough ink to shoot once again when running out of ink completely. And overall, it helps a lot just constantly recovering ink better to output more ink, which you might not feel at first but over a match of 5 minutes will make a huge difference. Quick respawn shortens the player's respawn time if he didn't get a kill or assist before he dies since he last respawned. It's used mainly if you want to play more aggressively and take more risks to minimize the costs of your death when you achieve nothing. Therefore it's most used in Slayer since you want to find that one opening by killing a lot of opponents to make a game winning play. Tetra Duelies and Ink Rush players benefit even more from it since they are able to take even more approaches since they don't need to mine enemy ink since they can just roll in. Also, every short range weapon benefits from quick respawn, since you will always need to get close to your opponents, putting you at risk to die more often. While mostly seen on Slayer, you can play quick respawn on every weapon, even backliner, if you plan on taking more aggressive angles, and is usually stacked a lot, since the effect of one sub of quick respawn is barely noticeable. It's often played in combination with Stealth Jump, which lets you get back into the battle safer, since you can take more risky jumps, effectively shortening the respawn time as well. Talking about getting back faster into the battle, Quick Super Jump increases Super Jump speed by reducing the duration of the Super Jump. It gets played a lot in combination with Stealth Jump, but is actually used in almost every weapon. On Slayers, to get back quicker into the fight again, or to jump out since it greatly reduces the buffer until you actually jump. For support and anchor players, it's mainly important to stay alive and they get outclassed by every weapon in close range, which forces them to jump out a lot, which Quick Super Jump helps tremendously. This is again one of the abilities you almost always want one sub onto your gear, because you can see here how much time it already saves for the cost of just one sub slot. For backliners, you sometimes want to play even 2-3 to three slots of Quick Super Jump, since you can jump out and save your life almost instantly when you get pushed. Main power up has a different effect on your main weapon with each different weapon you play. 
You can look up all the effects here on the Splatoon wiki. You either want to use some slots of main power up on weapons like the 52 Gull or the Splattershot, since it actually increases its accuracy, or the Roller or Dual E class, which get more consistent damage. It's an absolute must on the Splattershot Pro, the H3 Nuzzle Nose and the Baboozler, since all of these weapons, who are still super strong, get crazy benefits from main power up. For the H3 and the Splattershot Pro, it effectively makes the weapon a 2-shot kill instead of a 3-shot kill if the enemy touched your ink for 1 millisecond, while the Bamboozler even becomes a 1-shot kill, since it caps at 99.9 .9 damage. How much main power up you need on each of these weapons, you can look up on Sendu Ink by looking at what the top players play on these weapons. You will need to stack a lot of main power up on these though, to achieve a consistent 2-hit or 1-hit kill. For all the other weapons, using main power up is a bit more niche, but it still has use if you want to experiment around. <coughs> special charge up increases the rate the special gauge charges at. It can be effective on every weapon with a good special, so it depends on whether you want to invest in it. Mainly support weapons and weapons which paint well and have low points needed for special use special charge up to be able to quickly get a lot of specials to spam them, especially team based specials like armor or tenta missile, which can be applied in a lot of situations. Backliners sometimes run special charge as well if they have a push denying special like Stingray for example on Tower Control or Rainmaker, to just have it ready more often when the enemy team pushes. Special Saver reduces the amount of special lost after you got splatted. This ability often gets played in combination with Special Charge Up if you're looking to spam specials, but it's also one of the abilities which can be run on every weapon with just one sub, since the effect of only one sub is enormous. Almost 10% of your special is saved by just one sub. This ability gets affected by stacking like no other, so it's really recommended to not use more than 2 to 3 subs of it. Just by looking at that curve, you see how effective the first single sub of Special Saver is, and if your special is worth saving, having one sub of Special Saver is never a bad thing. Sub power up improves the performance of sub weapons. It's best used on supportive sets if you have a sub worth spamming, like any bomb and is great in combination with sub saver and ink recovery up. While it has a different effect on each sub, for most bombs it increases the travel speed and thus effectively its range. So it's great if you're looking to support your teammates from even further away. For squid beacons it increases the super jump speed which can be effective, but I would recommend only using this ability on bombs seen in the list right here. Special Power Up improves the performance of special weapons. While it has a different effect on every special, it's mostly just worth it to run it on a few from my experience. So when your weapon has one of the specials I gonna list in your kit, you might wanna give it a thought to run it. First Stingray. Stingray benefits greatly from it since it increases its duration, which means you're applying pressure for even longer and your Stingray will be even deadlier since you get more time to get that additional damage in to finish off a kill. Inkjet's duration also gets increased, giving you more time to get in those deadly shots. But additionally, it increases the shot's explosion radius as well, which makes it easier for you to hit opponents to confirm 3 indirect hits for a kill. For Ink Armor, it increases the duration but also decreases the activation time by a lot, allowing you to instantly react with armor if a teammate is in danger. The last special which benefits greatly from special power up is Bubble Blow, where running special power up is almost a must. It increases the size and the blast radius of the bubbles, which makes them a huge threat to everyone nearby. You have a way easier time to control space with it, and its effective kill range increases significantly, so opponents need to avoid your bubbles even more. Ink Resistance Up mitigates the negative effects of touching the opponent's ink on the ground. Once again, this ability grants you a lot of benefits already by using just one sub. Remember main power up and how it gives some weapons a two shot or a single shot kill, but just barely and only if you touch enemy ink once? Ink Resistance adds a few frames where you don't take any damage from enemy ink, denying that potential one or two shot kill by Bamboozler, H-Ray or Splattershot Pro, which are all still pretty dominant and prominent weapons. It also decreases the damage you can take by standing in enemy ink from 40 up to only 20 damage at max. Weapons that strafe a lot, meaning they walk left and right a lot while battling like Splatlings or the Sloshing Machine benefit greatly from this ability as well, since they can move more freely while taking less damage because ink resistance up also decreases the movement penalty while walking through ink. And that's why it's also strong to play on brushes as well, since they are likely to step into a lot of enemy ink while running around the map. The last secondary ability which can be used on every slot, Bomb Defense Up. 
Bomb defense up decreases the amount of damage taken by bombs and specials with splash damage, while also mitigating the effect of positioning or revealing effects like point sensors. Again, this ability is useful to have on almost any weapon with just one slot, since its effects are helping in so many situations. Only one subslot already decreases the duration of point sensors by 1.5 seconds. It makes indirect hits by missiles and inkjet a 3 shot kill instead of 2 shots. It decreases the damage by every bomb and tons of other specials in the game, for example bubble blowers, which reduces its effective kill range tremendously. And most importantly, it decreases the indirect damage of auto bomb, curling bomb, suction bomb and spat bomb, so that you take less than 30 damage by them. For those who are not aware, when you have armor it breaks when you get impact damaged by 30 damage or higher, which means with just one sub of bomb defense up, you withstand a huge indirect radius of almost every bomb in the game while keeping your armor, which is super useful. Of course you can stack the ability but it's not worth it that much, but I would recommend you always use one sub since it can save your skin in so many situations. <laughs> Starting with the first main ability, Comeback. Comeback gives the user a boost in several abilities for the first 20 seconds after respawning. Namely a whole main of Ink Saver main, Ink Saver sub, Ink Recovery up, Run Speed up, Swim Speed up and Special Charge up. This insane boost in countless of key abilities make Comeback one of the strongest abilities in the game. And you will see it mostly on Slayer since they are more likely to die and benefit from Comeback than any other role. It's inevitable for slayers and close range weapons to die since in order to chase kills they need to get close to opponents, exposing themselves to die. Comeback helps with key abilities like special charge up to get back your special faster, plus all movement abilities to get quicker into the fight again, plus all abilities helping with ink management which can help tremendously when all combined for 20 seconds. Ninja Squid is another slayer orientated ability, since it removes all ripples of ink while swimming through ink, making it easier to approach players and getting into spots unnoticed. Its hefty movement nerf when equipped force you to invest a lot into swim speed as well to regain the lost movement, about 7 subs of swim speed to get back to the initial swim speed when unequipped, meaning it's only good on weapons which can get good use out of it. Many short range weapons with a fast and easy kill like the roller, sploosh, octobrush or tri-slusher benefit most from this ability, since all they need to do is getting close enough to an opponent to confirm an easy kill, which should be guaranteed with these weapons if you can get an opponent into your effective range. Other Slayer weapons can benefit as well from Ninja Squid, but not as much as these fast killing weapons. Object Shredder is a counter picking ability. It increases damage dealt to objects or non-players. If you're up against teams or players which use a lot of armor, baller, bubbles or brella shields, you're gonna benefit greatly from Object Shredder. Also in Raymaker, you can apply way more pressure to the Raymaker shield and pop it easier with Object Shredder which makes it very match dependent, but if used in the right circumstances, it can be deadly. It can be used on every weapon class and role. It's preferred on support players and weapons with an easy time shredding objects anyway, like sploosh or charger. Also weapons who have bubble blowers as special need object shredder to consistently pop their bubbles to use them efficiently. Having an alternative object shredder set ready can really save your skin in certain matches, so investing in it is never a bad thing. Stealth Jumps hides the user's Super Jump landing marker unless an opponent is close to it, but it also makes the Super Jump longer, and this allows players to reliably jump back into the game, into otherwise risky spots to be back quicker in the right positions to be effective. While mostly frontline players want to be in aggressive spots, it's best for them to use Stealth Jumps since a backliner or a midliner who don't need to do risky jumps can simply swim back to their position or jump to safer places without Stealth Jump. This makes Stealth Jump another Slayer ability, which reduces respawn times and goes well together with Quick Super Jump and Quick Respawn, and is greatly recommended if you want to hunt for kills the whole match. Drop Roller allows the player to roll after performing Super Jump and shortly increases its run speed, swim speed and ink resistance for 3 seconds. It serves a similar purpose like Stealth Jump, making it safer to jump into more risky spots. While seen as inferior to Stealth Jump by most, it still sees use on Slayer weapons as a mix up to Stealth Jump and weapons with an easy one shot kill like Roller and Blaster can really benefit from Drop Roller, if they draw attention to the jump and then getting that quick burst kill in after the landing roll onto unaware jump camper. Also since Stealth Jump doesn't cover inkjet landing spots, Drop Roller is a neat alternative for Slayers with inkjet since it allows them to defend themselves, after having to jump back to the inkjet landing spot which might be an argument to use it over Stealth Jump on these weapons. Haunt shows the location of opponents that splattered you only to the user via a white silhouette that can be seen through objects. 
and only while the opponent is not submerged in ink, only while a certain distance away from the opponent, which is about the range of a bamboozler. Again, a slayer orientated ability, but since it's a weak nature, it doesn't see much play. If you want to use it, I would recommend having it on a weapon which is actually able to hunt down the revealed user, so having it on a midline or backliner would be a waste. Last ditch effort gives the user Ink Saver main, Ink Saver sub and Ink Recovery up during the final state of a match. You can get up to 8 sub abilities of said abilities and the requirements vary from mode to mode. In turf it only applies to the last 30 seconds, while in any other point based mode it starts activating if the opponents push till 50 and it gets its maximum effect when the opponents push till 30. Since it only boosts ink management abilities, it's best to use it on support or any other weapons with a good spammable sub weapon like a fuzzy bomb for example. You will be able to paint more which comes in handy for modes like zones or turf where you want to contest the zone as a support. But also in other modes you can spam way more bombs when this ability gets activated which can really help keeping opponents at bay in like tower controller remaker where opponents need to actively push into your territory. It's especially useful in turf war since the last 30 seconds matter the most so the boost really helps here. It's a great addition to many kids who look for outputting bombs and spamming with the main weapons and is best combined with main saver, sub saver and ink recovery up. Opponent Gambit is kind of the opposite of last ditch effort, just weaker in general while boosting run speed, swim speed and ink resistance up. The effect is active for the first 30 seconds and can be extended by 7.5 seconds for each kill or assist done. While it could come in handy for support players who gets a lot of assists early on, especially with um, ink armor, the benefit of run speed, swim speed and ink resistance up is just not useful enough on a support for it being effective. You only get about 5 sub of each ability anyway. So only Slayer could really benefit from these movement buffs, but it's hard to extend the effect for a longer period. It can serve its purpose on some maps to get into key positions earlier, but since it's a headgear it's usually just better to run comeback on it. If you want to use it anyway, I would recommend Slayer or support weapons which have an easy time getting assists with specials like armor or missiles. Respawn Punisher increases the respawn time and the amount of special that is lost to both the user and the opponents defeated by the user. While the effect goes both way, the effects are strong on the user of the ability, meaning he will take longer to respawn, about 1.5 seconds, than an enemy he has spent, about 1.25 seconds. This ability only makes sense if you spend more opponents than you die, and could be thus run on every weapon, which you feel confident enough in doing so. But experience has shown that in most cases it's not really worth it to run. The only weapon class where it makes sense is backline, since it's more likely to kill way more than dying, since you will stay back safe most of the time in the match. Also, because assists don't really activate the effect, a weapon that gets a kill entirely on their own, like a one-shot charger, might be the best weapon to recommend running this on, where it can be effective if you're playing a clean match. While you can experiment with other weapons, I would not recommend running it. Tenacity fills up your special meter only when the user's team has less active players than the opponent's team. It's about 2 special points for one player down a second, 4 special points while 2 players are down per second and 6 special points while 3 players are down a second. This can help you getting your special way faster and is thus recommended on weapons worth spamming your special on. Even though it sounds good on paper, it doesn't really see much use even on support weapons, which just run special charge up, which is more reliable instead. You will also see a similar effect in ranked battles anyway, where it automatically charges your special when you're in control of the objective. So every player already experiences a similar effect anyway. The last ability to cover, Terminal Ink. Terminal Ink reveals the location of players that the user deals damage to with the user's main weapon, as a direct hit for about 16 seconds as a wide silhouette within a certain reach. The reach is about a Splattershot Pro's range, and the player only gets revealed to the player who uses the ability. It has limited use and is only good on weapons which have a certain range and a slower killing time. On a fast killing weapon you will barely find yourself in a situation where the effect activates, while short range weapons just don't benefit enough since they can simply just chase the people they hit since they are close by anyway. Also some weapons like blasters or explosion, where you might think it's valuable to know where the opponents are behind cover, since these weapons can actually split people behind cover, are actually not that useful with this ability since you have to hit a direct hit, which means in the blasters case you get the one hit KO anyway, and for explosion it's super hard hitting the direct reliably. The only weapons Termaling sometimes gets played on are Jet Squad Shop, Blob Lover and Slosher. Since all of these have either good range, with slow killing power, or are able to reliably kill opponents behind objects. 
meaning once you hit him you will know where they get cover to potentially finish off the kill. You can run it on a lot of other weapons as well, but there's simply better alternatives to run. I will now go over some top player gear builds from lots of different weapon classes and explain why they might have chosen the exact abilities they did. This is a good self test for you guys to see if you understood why the best players in the game chose certain abilities and if you watched through the whole guide and understand the thought process behind the top player set, you're good to go to create equally good sets like the ones from the very best players. Let's start with a Slayer set first. With a Slayer obviously you want to get kills so quick respawn really helps mitigating the risk of finding openings. Also the stealth jumps so you can jump back into riskier spots more safely. The swim speed helps with movement, makes you way more scary in 1v1 since you're just quicker. The um, main power up helps with the accuracy. So a lot of it's already done with this um, kit and the rest of the slots are just the filler slots of the one sub abilities I talked about which always help a lot by just putting on one of them. Next a supportive set, the Splattershot Junior with its armor and spell bomb. That's the main way you want to support your teammates. That's why the special charge up to get the armor quicker that one sub of sub saver just saves so much of your special once you die. For the spell bomb, the sub saver paired with the um, ink recovery up, that's a good combination. Also the um, sub power up to throw them further, so you just can throw more bombs further, so you can assist your teams from further away. Then the object shredder just helps just shredding the other team's armor since armor is such a prominent special to go up against and the rest of the slots are again the filler slots I talked about. Let's also take a look at the back line, the splat charger with its stingray here. The sit is heavily built around stingray, you see the special charge up with the special saver to just get it more often and the special power up so you have more time applying pressure and get the additional damage in to confirm a kill with the special. Also the main power up helps with the damage, the main saver just to get one or two more shots out. And lastly we have the filler slots again, the bomb defense up, but one main of quick super jump. It's because backliners can't take close range 1v1s pretty often and it's better to stay alive and one main of quick super jump just allows you to jump out immediately. So having that helps a lot as well. Let's take a look at another backline as well, the heavy splitting remix. Like I mentioned before, splatlings have by default a really high run speed, so just stacking more of them just helps tremendously because you're looking to strafe around left and right while walking, to be agile while firing. Also with that, one main of ink resistance up helps a lot because while walking around you're gonna touch a lot of enemy inks, so taking less damage and less movement penalty from it helps a lot. Again we have two um, subs of quick super jump to help us jump out immediately once we are getting pushed and can't win the 1v1. And lastly since this is a heavy weapon it's gonna be super slow by default and just having those two sub slots of swim speed is gonna get us back to that default medium swim speed and balances out our set pretty nicely. And lastly, let's take a look at another support set, the H3D. Like I said, with this weapon you want to stack a lot of main power because you can effectively make your weapon a two-shot kill. That's why they're stacking that much main power up and you need that much main power up to get exactly 99.99 .99 damage. The rest of the slots are just our filler slots again, plus some special charge up to just get the special quicker since it's a support weapon. And just one sub of main saver so you can just shoot a little bit more with your deadly main weapon. I hope going over these top player builds just helped to clarify a bit how to approach building gear so you can start building your own perfect sets. Alright, I hope this guide covers everything there is to know about gear and abilities in the game. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask me in the comments below. The guide took me longer than anticipated and turned out longer than I thought as well, but I'm glad I could get all the information out there into one video. If you haven't watched my other guides yet, I greatly recommend you doing so if you want to become better at the game. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment and subscribe for more guides, montages and funny videos in the future. With that being said, have a good one, see you around guys. Watson, out.